Hello and welcome to the Daily FX European Market Update, powered by IG, with me, Jeremy Naylor, in for Katie Pilbeam. In just a moment, I'll be speaking with analyst Nick Corley about some of the events of the week to watch out for coming up. But first of all, the headlines on this Friday. Oil takes the news as OPEC fails to please the markets. The oil and gas sector is the worst performing across Europe. G7 meeting, meanwhile, in Sicily is overshadowed by the Trump administration facing the latest wave of scrutiny back home. And UK polls show that the political parties are seeing the lead by the Conservatives narrow as Labour moves up. Let's take a look at what's happening in the markets as we've got uh, three hours to go before the close of this Friday session. The FTSE 100 is uh, outperforming on the upside. We've seen new record highs today, led higher by a weaker sterling, helping some of those exporters. Outside of that, it's really all about oil, pulling down those oil stocks, those oil-related companies leading the declines across the European markets with the French CAC 40 down two-thirds of 1%. So welcome to this show on this Friday as we round off the week, looking ahead to next week, which is a foreshortened week here in the UK and also in the US markets. We do have trade on Monday across much of Europe, but it is a holiday in the UK and the US. But nonetheless, let's get down to business. There is news out next week, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Nick Corley joins us now. Nick, we start off with what really has been the big news of the week, and that's been this drop in the price of oil. Yes, indeed. Um, it, it seems a bit of a classic case of buy the rumours, sell the fact. I mean, the, the production cuts that we got yesterday, um, another nine months of uh, production cuts, were, were kind of well signalled you know, since the beginning of May, really. And since then, you know, oil price has gone up about 15, 17 per cent. Uh, and then you look at uh, yesterday, the news came out, it was all confirmed, uh, mm -hmm. and we, we dropped, what, 5, 6 per cent in one day. Um, yeah, as I said, it really is a sort of uh, buy the rumour, sort of sell the fact kind of uh, thing. But if you look on the chart there, it's, it's, it's turned slightly negative. If you can see, we've, we've gone through all the um, sort of the, uh, moving averages and uh, we, there's, there's a chance that we could get back down to, you know, we've got that line there at $50 for, from those... Um, you know, and if we break there, we could uh, we could move back back down to the downside. Interesting question here, actually, I think is about oil, is whether or not the cartel, in fact, not just OPEC, but the non-OPEC producers have yeah. misjudged the US shale production because Donald Trump had this policy going into the election, but he came to pass and he got into power, and he's doing all to encourage US shale, and it's now producing almost 10 million barrels a day. That yeah. surely cannot really have been on OPEC's horizon back in November last year when they said, let's go for cuts on, on oil. Yeah, no, I think, as you're right, I think it's a, sort of, it's a record production 2016, 2017 production, just under 10 million barrels a day. and and. It is really capping any rises on that out there, and as you said, the OPEC and the non-OPEC producers, they've really got to try and get to grips with it, because uh, production costs of shale for a lot of these companies is maybe in the, in the early mid-$40 a barrel. And so, you know, when we're up, you know, up at 50s and stuff like that, they're making good money, so they're just going to carry on producing. Yeah. Um, got to talk about Bitcoin. Uh, that was another big story this week. In fact, this has been one of the big stories the last few weeks, this parabolic rise uh, for, the, for the price of Bitcoin. Uh, as money comes out of other areas of the markets, it just seems to find a home in Bitcoin, and it just continues to rise. Um, from a technical point of view and from a, a fundamental point of view, what are you watching? Um, it's, it's quite a difficult one to do on, from a technical point of view because really, it, you know, as you say, it's just this parabolic rise. It's just going up and up all, all the time. But I think what we were looking at um, uh, yesterday, uh, there was a very sharp move. Um, and in fact, we had in, in, in a, in a, in a four, space of four hours, we had a 20% a drop in the price. And I mean, that's, that's a really for, for what should be a major asset, or if it wants to be classed a major asset. To drop 20% in four hours is, is, is really quite, uh, it's quite a worrying sign. So you're worried there, is, is, if, is that a signal, is that a sell signal, is, 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 are the red lights flashing, or is this a kind of consolidation that people are looking for, Get the mar let the market fall lower, let the market fall lower, and then come back in to, in to buy it again. But as I said, a 20% move in that time frame was very worrying. Yeah, that's this candle here, this uh, long-legged doji, right, yeah. uh, which is an indecision candle. But you look yeah. at today's trade, and it's, it seems relatively positive. But look at this. This is interesting. The uh, overbought on the RSI, the relative strength index, yeah. this is a 14-day RSI. Mm -hmm. It's been overbought now for the whole of May. Yeah, it's been overbought since the whole of May, and it's gone up 100%. Uh, it's, yeah. uh, so, as I said, it's, it's very difficult to, to, to use uh, sort of 
traditional technical analysis on this one. I think, yeah. it's, as I said, if, you, if you're trading uh, Bitcoin, you, you've really got to be uh, you've got to be on your toes. Yeah. Uh, Let's talk about sterling. Uh, yeah. As I mentioned at the top, this is one of the reasons I think this drop in sterling is one of the reasons why we've got some money going into the FTSE at the moment, because of these exporters benefiting from, yeah. from lower, lower pound. The pound recently um, seemed to want to go over 130 against mm -hmm. the dollar, failed, and in the last couple of days or so we've had this relatively spectacular drop. Um, what are you writing about uh, on, on sterling at the moment? Um, as you, I think, as you rightly said, the 130, it seems to be capped around the 130, 130.5 level sterling and uh, cable, and whatever it does, it, it, it's, it's not breaking through there. Um, uh, today we had, um, as, you, as you mentioned earlier, when we had the polls showing the, uh, the lead between uh, the, the Tories party over the Labour party narrowing to 5%. Uh, to 5%. Um, the first poll, when um, Theresa May announced on, on the 18th of April that she was uh, going to hold a general election, was around 20, you know, 20 percent difference. Uh, and you can see again, if you look on the, on the chart there, you can see that uh, candle. Uh, you know, that was that was that was the boost to sterling from Theresa May saying, "I'm going to go to the polls. We're going to get, you know, a bigger lead, uh, and everything's okay." Um, and then you can see today that uh, the last candle, the sort of bearish candle. People are sort of saying, well, if this lead is so narrow, you know, what if? And, and we all know what happens with polls, unfortunately, these days. Yeah, it's a question now, technically, it's whether or not we get a daily close, I guess, below this line here, which has been the support, which I think is uh, 128, the number. Yeah. Uh, nice mm -hmm. round figure. Yeah, and then what you'll actually see is then you'll see that there'll be a, some kind of gap between 128 and around 126 and mm. uh, a little bit. Uh, and if if sterling is to push further ahead, if cable is to push further ahead, you'd look for that gap to be closed first of all. Yeah. What are you looking at next week in terms of uh, sterling trades? Um, we, well, we've got the manufacturing PMI coming out next week, which it was very strong. Uh, April's number was very strong. It's like 57.3, best figure in three years and stuff. Weak sterling again should help manufacturing, especially for, obviously for the exports, but. The number's expected around 56, so just a slight tap down tick, but it's still a strong number. Um, but if we get something slightly weaker than that, and people sort of say, well, maybe the weak sterling effect has faded from the export market, then again, sterling could come under pressure. Yeah, OK, all right, looking ahead to that uh, data next week. In fact, I want to stay ahead uh, in, the, in the forward gear because yeah. we've got non-farm payrolls uh, yes. next Friday. As I said, it's a foreshortened week here in the UK and yeah. in the US, which means that the private payroll number, the ADP, comes out on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's a correlation, isn't it, between ADP and yeah. non-farm payroll. So we have to wait to Thursday to get that uh, first impression of what's happening. Um, but what's the, 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 the word on the, on the payroll market? Um, I think last month we came in 194. Um, generally expected around the 174, 175 level. That's market expectations. But as we know with non-farm payrolls, uh, you've got to really look at the revisions as well. It's not just the headline number, revisions, and then you've obviously look at uh, wage growth and, 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 and a couple of other numbers. So it's, it's not just all about the, the headline figure. But we, we have had, we had a, a initial claims uh, yesterday. That was a slightly weaker number. Uh, we've had some soft inflation uh, figures in uh, March and April in the US. So, you know, it looks like all this, this bullishness that we had, uh, who really was saying about the US economy, how it's driving forward. It has, it's all been tempered a little bit, and, uh, you know, all these expectations of interest rate rises, at least three this year. You know, we expect one in, in the uh, June uh, 13th, 14th of FMC meeting, but that may be the last one for the year, so it'll only be two. And so, uh, you know, as I said, all the expectations have been sort of tempered back a bit. Yeah, OK. All right. Uh, thanks so much indeed. Let's just go very br briefly back to the chart, if we can, mm -hmm. uh, just to show. In fact, Nick can include you in this, because uh, this is the, the, the dollar basket. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, uh, this here was the point at which we had the election and confirmation of Donald Trump taking office. Since then, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the dollar's been up. But it's in the last few days we've seen this uh, get ever closer towards that level of 96, which is where the dollar started out mm -hmm. at its low point. And that seems now to be the target to break. It, it seems that way. Uh, also, if, with the dollar basket, I mean, it's uh, it, it's got a sort of weighting of about 50, 55 percent of the euro in there. And with a, yeah. a slightly stronger euro as well, that's also driving the price of the dollar basket down. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's again that uh, the, where the trend started, it's, it's, a good, it's a good target for, you know, to, to look at. Um, there seems to be, as I said, the interest rate expectations have been pulled back. Um, and with it, they know the dollar weakens. Yeah. 
Okay, all right, uh, Nick, thanks so much indeed. Uh, looking ahead uh, to next week, as I said, is a, a foreshortened week. That's it uh, for our look at uh, some of the news around the markets in today's session on this Friday, 26th of May. Uh, let's take you back to those uh, European markets, uh, as I said, with around about uh, three hours of the trading session left to go.